Hi friends, welcome to my channel. You are watching Physio Facts. I am bringing the interesting facts in the field of physiotherapy and myself Dr. Alphonse Saburu Swami. Before getting into today's video, please do subscribe my channel as well as click the bell icon so that you'll get the notifications as soon as I make new videos. Today's topic is going to be on capsula pattern of restriction. Yes, it is very important in the clinical examination of a patient who is coming across having a restriction in the range of motion, especially in the orthopedic assessment. It is explained by Cerex. Let us learn more about that. Restriction of range of motion can be because of any structure that is present around the joint. It may be a bony block, a pathology in the bone that may restrict the range of motion or it can be a muscle that is gone for contracture or shortening that may limit the range of motion. It can also be a ligament that adheres to the underlying bone that may limit the range of motion. And finally, it can also be a capsule that limit the uh, range of motion. So today we are going to focus on what happens when a capsule gets involved that limits the range of motion. When a joint range of motion limitation occurs secondary to a joint capsule tightness, a predictable pattern of motion loss is observed. Well, then what is a predictable pattern? If a joint that is having limitation because of a muscle involvement, say brachialis muscle, it will affect extension of elbow joint alone. And if uh, uh, movement restriction is going to be because of the tightness of subscapularis muscle, it may limit external rotation of shoulder and abduction of shoulder. And if a capsule is going to get involved or going to be the primary cause of restriction of motion because of uh, probably inflammation of the capsule, it will affect almost all or most of the movement possible in a joint. So that is the reason it will lead to a pattern of movement loss, not just one movement restriction. For example, it will affect one movement the most, the other movement moderately and the, the rest of the movement will be affected very less. So it will lead to the pattern of movement restriction. For example, in shoulder, if shoulder capsule is getting tighter, it leads to external rotation more affected, abduction moderately affected and internal rotation less affected. So this we call a pattern of movement restriction and predictable pattern in the sense it can always be predicted if shoulder joint capsule is involved, it means it will have this kind of presentation and same in the other joints. So this is the reason that leads to a predictable pattern of uh, movement restriction when a capsule is involved. And the causes for that particular involvement of that joint capsule probably because of joint effusion, synovial inflammation that leading to capsule of fibrosis. It can be seen in conditions like traumatic inflammations or infectious conditions or in rheumatoid arthritis or even in gout arthritis. What happens there? When we try to move a joint which is already inflamed, it may trigger pain and to prevent that particular movement, muscle spasm develops in a reflex way to protect that particular movement. And this protective muscle spasm leads to the creation of a capsular pattern of restriction. There are evidences that support this the presence of a capsular pattern of restriction climbed by Cerex. There are also studies that check or doubt the validity of uh, the concept proposed by Cerex. Whatever it is, it is must to know about the capsular pattern of each joint that is available. For example, in the shoulder joint, the capsular pattern of restriction is the external rotation will be more affected, abduction will be moderately affected, internal rotation will be less affected 
and this is the pattern when you see when a capsule of a shoulder joint is involved as if in a adhesive capsulitis in terms of elbow joint flexion will be more limited than extension it means when a capsule of elbow joint is involved flexion range of motion will be more limited than extension for example if elbow is giving 150 degree of flexion once the capsule of elbow joint is involved he may get uh, probably 110 degree of flexion and extension probably 30 degree of extension lag or lack it means more flexion is involved than extension wrist joint for an example it uh, affects both flexion as well as extension so we call it as equal loss of flexion and extension when capsule of wrist joint is involved and it may affect the radial and ulnar deviation to lesser extent coming to the lower limb the hip flexion and internal rotation will be the most affected abduction will be moderately affected and extension of the hip probably less affected and adduction external rotation may not be affected or there may be little restriction of those movements knee joint it is again equivalent or same like in uh, elbow joint flexion more affected than extension and finally the ankle joint plantar flexion is more affected than dorsiflexion clinically seeing this kind of presentation is difficult because every time when you keep, get a patient with a dorsiflexion limitation because of the posture they load up but according to seriax when the capsule is involved plantar flexion will be more affected yes by knowing the capsular pattern of restrictions of different joints it will make us to do an uh, effective differential diagnosis and to bring to an accurate diagnosis and to choose an appropriate technique which is uh, opt for that particular condition and aiding in faster recovery and saving our time well and uh, so far we were discussing about capsular pattern of restriction i hope uh, uh, it would have been a bit informative and uh, thank you for watching this video and please do subscribe as well as uh, share my video to your friends and uh, i will meet you again with uh, another interesting video thank you